Discovery Channel. I'm Tracy Stetter. And I'm Casey D. Gardner. And we're here at Boston University Medical Center. And we're looking at new technology for early diagnosis of lung cancer. And since I'm a smoker, I just had the test done on myself. So the research uh, that we're going to show you today essentially involves collecting cells and looking at the genetic material in those cells in order to understand whether if you smoke, you're at risk for developing or having lung cancer. It's the team's goal to identify the group susceptible to cancer. And they're doing it by taking non-invasive samples from the airways, something that can't be done with current lung cancer diagnostic testing. But only 10 to 15 percent of smokers will actually get lung cancer. Okay. The key is to try to target and predict which one of those 10 to 15. While that sounds like a small percent, Dr. Spira says current and former smokers account for 90 percent of all the lung cancer cases. All the cells that line your airway, from your windpipe all the way down to your lungs, mm -hmm. are affected at a genetic level when you're exposed to a carcinogen like tobacco smoke. What we found is there's a subset of people who smoke who have a different response at a genetic level to the exposure. And we believe that puts them at risk for developing tobacco-related lung cancer. We're right there. Posterior, middle, oh, yeah. five, five okay. o'clock. You're going to have uh, what's called a bronchoscopy. Basically, it's a flexible tube, a fiber optic tube with a light and a camera at the end. We're going to place it inside your air tubes. And we take brushings from inside there, and it brushes off some cells. And um, we take those brushings out, and then we put them in, into our solutions here, and then, and then study them. The current problem with diagnosing lung cancer is that it requires invasive biopsies deep within the lung tissue, areas that Spear says are hard to access. What we've done is basically use cells that are easy to obtain at bronchoscopy that are not where the tumor is, but they're almost like a, a window into what's going on much more deeply into the lung. The new technology analyzes genetic material and can tell if someone's genetically more likely to get lung cancer by pinpointing which genes are turned on or off. Recognizing the patterns gives information about how a person will respond to smoking. Here's how the test works. After the sample is taken, genetic material is isolated with dye and put on a glass slide. There's already DNA probes on that glass slide, so once the genetic material from the sample is added to the slide, it binds with the appropriate DNA. The glass slide is cooked for 16 hours, giving the genetic material a chance to find its target and form a chemical bond. Then it's placed in this machine to clean off any material that hasn't connected with its target. The next step is to scan the slide, which eventually creates a data set that looks like this. This looks like something my three-year-old put together in daycare. This seemingly unorganized mess is the research subject's genetic makeup, with each color representing an on or off gene. The genetic test is still in the clinical trial phase, and even if it gets FDA approval, it won't be available in your doctor's office for a few years. As for me, since this was a closed study, I never found out if I had the lung cancer gene or not. I didn't think it was going to go that well, actually. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I have no voice now. For Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.